Hi, this is Kalyan from Sai Solution. We are trying to ask this question, what is the matter of fact? In coming few Sundays, we have planned that uh, we will be uh, joining together and we'll try to inquire, what is the matter of fact? So definitely the objective of this conversation, uh, these conversations uh, would be uh, to find out the cause, the root cause of our disturbances, be it physical, relational or mental. So uh, we'll touch upon the materialism and uh, all, uh, rationality aspect and also the vitality conservation aspect. Right. So we'll explore matters and ideas out of the facts that we experience in our lives. So uh, also we'll be touching upon the confusion points, confusion points of uh, materialism and idealism. Uh, so now if these terms actually uh, may differ uh, with our practice to practice. So uh, let's uh, be on the same page and try to understand these terms. What are the meanings of these terms that we are using to start with the matter? The meaning of matter here we are uh, trying to propose is the commonly perceivable truth. Uh, undeniable, the undeniable establishment of its existence in general. So uh, matter is that existence which is undeniable. Commonly it is accepted that this exists. There is no debate about its existence. That is what is the matter that we are talking about, like the primary matters are obviously the radiation, air, water, and sound. Um, so all these are primary matters which cannot be denied, <laughs> right? Now ideas, we use the term ideas also. So ideas are non-perceivable, like it is thought, thought form. So it is uh, non-perceivable. I cannot uh, claim that this is my idea. You cannot claim this is your idea because I cannot show my idea. You cannot show like my idea can be perceived by me only, not by you. So that is the idea. So since it is non-perceivable, it cannot be confirmed or established as truth, but may be experienced at the emotional level. It can be experienced at the emotional level and it is actually, that's the uh, primary aspect that, that we are going to discuss that uh, the effect of ideas on our emotion individually. Now the term fact. Uh, the term fact may uh, be used in different ways, but here we are trying to propose that the fact is commonly considered as confirmed truth and it is an emotional experience it actually triggers an emotional experience then only we identify its existence so emotionally experienced matter or idea or a combination right so which means a fact could be just matter a fact could be combination of matter and idea Right? We understood matter and idea, combination of matter and idea. And a fact could be just idea. Now, if it is not clear, we'll just try to make it a uh, little more simpler in terms of its ex examples. So we'll uh, take examples of three pleasure points of ours, food, sex, and mindfulness. <clears throat> so food, the first example, uh, which is a matter driven experience of food, which is uh, naturally, for example, naturally grown mango, where no intention has gone into it to modify it. Try and understand. No ideas have gone into it to modify it. So the experience of naturally grown mango is a matter driven fact, fact experience, right? Now, a combination of matter and idea could be pizza or any cooked or uh, modified food which uh, uh, has got a lot of ideas in it to modify. 
so uh, there are uh, matters definitely for example pizza do have uh, wheat salt spices and etc but a lot of ideas in it right so uh, you need to identify this fact as a combination of matter and ideas now in thought of any food which gives some emotional experience suppose that's an example of idea giving experience as a fact uh, giving experience uh, as a food and that we consider as fact the moment we physiologically experience it we identify its existence right now coming to the uh, aspect of sex it is also a pleasure pleasure point and very important prominent pleasure point so now matter driven experience of sex is when sex is emerged out of physical proximity of two consenting responsible people so they are in a relationship with or without sex but due to the physical proximity there could be some making love emerged out that is a matter driven sex now if the sex is planned started at the mind planned casual sex where there is no responsibility of the relation or no uh, uh, tagging uh, as we commonly these days uh, use this term so that actually starts at the mind then the physical proximity comes in and uh, execution happens that's a combination of matter and idea so here we are not proposing any ethics or uh something um, good or bad right or wrong we are trying to explore the aspect of vitality conservation through understanding of facts right now the third i third uh, example is the fantasy where the physical proximity is not there just in the mind some sexual thoughts and the sexual experience physiologically that's a fact idea driven only now mindfulness mindfulness is a state of trance we can call all or deep concentration we can we can call that can be attained through observation when you observe without opinion you attain a mindfulness and that's absolutely matter driven because what you observe you observe the matter you observe the matter without any idea without any opinion means without any idea so it is it is an experience of mindfulness through observation through matters now the combination of matter and idea could be alcohol could be drugs where you attain the similar kind of state of mind but with a substance which was programmed to achieve that kind of mindfulness <coughs> the third idea third uh, example is the idea idea based which is a visualization visualization means you dreaming you are dreaming about something and you are experiencing something physiologically that means you are experiencing a good feelings or bad feelings identified feelings with your visualization no physical entry so that's an idea that's an idea we consider as a fact to achieve mindfulness so three areas we discussed now fact is primarily identified at the emotional level that you need to understand and to understand emotion we need to also understand the vitality conservation because the vitality the energy that we have is distributed amongst our three existence which are which are actually physical physiological and psychological physical physiological and psychological in other words we actually call that physical aspect is the matter and physiological aspect that means which we are experiencing within the body a uh, voice of the organism the good feeling or bad feeling identified physiological sensation right so that's actually the emotion and the last is the idea out of that emotion some thoughts come some understanding comes now this emotion can be touched upon or can be reached upon through the matter or through the ideas also so that means we can reach 
to the emotion from the matter or from the idea in other words actually the acting may generate feeling or also the thinking may generate feeling now why we are actually specifying the root cause of the feeling because this feeling the feeling is the primary aspect of our vitality engagement if there is a there is a uh, valid limited feeling rational feeling within us so rational and irrational uh, how we define the rational feeling and uh, irrational emotion or feeling if there is a start and end then it is rational because the vitality conservation happens by default so there is no good or bad we are talking here in terms of vitality conservation and over engagement we are talking the terms here so now physiological or the emotional aspect or the feeling aspect is the primary aspect in our vitality conservation because if that physiological aspect physiological sensation is not ending then we are forming a loop how that loop gets formed we need to understand now the linear connection of the matter driven when the emotion is matter driven it is coming from the action you acted upon then some emotion has come so <clears throat> if it is dependent on the action then it has a start and it has an end we need to identify this aspect so if the physical matter or the action is causing physiological sensation emotion and feeling matter means it has a start and an end so when it ends it ends now if it is idea driven if the emotion is idea driven let's try and understand this aspect this is very mathematical and logical aspect we can understand it clearly we need to understand first before we execute it so ideas suppose ideas are generating some emotion so that means an idea has generated some physiological sensation and i have identified it the moment i identify it i acknowledge it and the moment i acknowledge it the idea becomes stronger idea becomes stronger and the moment it becomes stronger again it will trigger some emotion and which will be far more vivid than the previous because it has got a support of identification and acknowledgement and the moment that happens further the idea gets strengthened and the loop starts and there is no physical entry needed to start and continue this loop we need to understand because idea is fueling it an idea is endless you can create ideas and you can create further the emotions are triggered so this is a loop loop of vitality engagement we need to identify this now <clears throat> while talking about this ideas and the impact on the vitality uh, engagement mm, we may go a uh, little uh, irrational if we identify that ideas are bad as a whole we are not proposing that we need to be explicit about this so idea without emotional baggage is the most powerful thought form an individual can experience that we need to understand so that means if an idea has stuck to your mind but you are not disturbed you are not disturbed physiologically there is no emotional baggage that you have created then that idea has got the best powerful thought form we need to understand so uh, that's very important aspect and in these all uh, um, analysis that th thought provokers are uh, sir kevin hinton who has taught us the pure nature cure concept and the rational analysis of nat nature and when we talk about rational analysis we cannot forget the contribution of Al albert ellis who has uh, coined this uh, rational emotive behavior therapy so <clears throat> the way ellis has explained the emotion rationally uh, it's a, a absolutely simplistic uh, way of explanation of emotion because we get confused with emotion identifying the irrational emotion as the emotion only 
so uh, so we need to understand this aspect of rationality in emotion and uh, sn goenka who has uh, actually taught us the observation power of observation on the matter on the breathing breathing is the primary matter and uh, and our body sensation physiological sensation how we can observe without reaction so <clears throat> that's a very uh, important contribution in this journey and uh, nonetheless like when we talk about pure nature gear when we talk about uh, rational uh, emotive behavioral therapy or rbt or when we talk about vipassana we are trying to achieve one thing that is freedom and freedom is incomparably explained by jiddu krishnamurti uh, the way it is explained by him we actually understand it's as clear as possible so uh, contribution of uh, jk also is undeniable in this process so i uh, expect you to join the con con conversation and uh, we'll dive deeper together and this is the link to join uh, bit.ly/matter-of-fact so let's uh, join together and and dive together thank you bye bye